They call it the Grapevine, a fateful stretch of California's I-5 highway leading into the Central Valley north of Los Angeles. The name comes from the thick, wild overgrowth of Cimarron grapes through which pioneers had to hack a path for their wagons in the 1800s. Many more grape varieties are now grown deep inside that territory and Sunview Vineyards has occupied a prime spot at the south end of the San Joaquin Valley for almost a century. Standing in the shade of an upright gable vine and wearing something like a cowboy hat, third generation table grape farmer Marko Zaninovich recounts how his grandfather and namesake travelled across the world from Croatia with his brothers in the 1930s. In the bare details, it's a classic American immigration story. He was the youngest of 10 in his family and he came because he was I think, looking for opportunity and he was hungry. Weather-wise, this particularly warm and dry pocket of inland California is optimal for production of table grapes. But farming back in those days was a precarious enterprise and the brothers could not make enough money to support the entire clan. Most went their own way, but Marco's grandfather stuck at it here in Sunview. By the mid-1960s, his father had inherited a viable business which Marco and his own children, as well as nieces and nephews, have since been able to grow much further. We were able to continue growing and really took advantage of export opportunities. And uh, really, as the domestic retail business developed in the United States, we were able to become a, a supplier of table grapes to domestic retailers. As things now stand, the harvest begins in July and moves up the valley as the season progresses, with certain conventionally and organically grown grapes becoming ripe and ready later in summer and into the autumn. Cold storage and refrigerated containers allow for shipping right up to Christmas time, and buyers at Spinney's have come to rely on Southview as a trusted partner. Two varieties stand out for being both especially tasty and entirely proprietorial. The green grape, Stella Bella, and the red grape, Sparkle, were created here at Sunview and are only available from this single source. They're the fruits of a plant breeding program that Marco's father began back in the 1970s. The process of crossing and then evaluating is a very timely process. And we're really looking for something that's better for the consumer has a better flavor, perhaps a better color, and probably the one that's most important is, is it uniquely different than what's available to the consumer today? We want something that really is, is less hand labor, less management, so you don't have to constantly be manipulating the cluster or manipulating the total crop size prior to packaging. Every time you go through and really touch the cluster, you run a risk of puncturing a berry, which leads to uh, potential exposure for potentially a botrytis infection or some other, some other puncture that could lead to a bad arrival. And our goal is to have a really good arrival for our consumers. He goes on to detail what this means at the level of the individual grape. For the consumer that may not understand table grapes very well, our goal is really to have something that's very uh, appealing to the palate, right? A fairly neutral flavor, yet sweet and crunchy, and a color that's got a brilliant color behind it. So you don't want a dark green or a very uh, faded out green. You want something brilliant, perhaps a little bit of finish, and what we term finish might be a little bit of lighter color compared to the dark green berry and then you want a full green stem and you want to be able to very satisfying crunch when you bite the berry. What you find with generally texture is a lot more meat in the middle of the berry and that ends up being not a watery experience so very uh, fibrous not overly fibrous but it's just like eating uh, almost like eating a, uh, a piece of watermelon where it's very solid but yet it it uh, breaks apart very easily in your mouth. We'll be harvesting 18 to 19 sugar, 20 sugar is where we aim for on Stella Bella. And Sparkle, very similar. You want a brilliant red color that gets people's attention. You don't want a dark purple, and you don't want something that's half 
yellow and half red, we were really trying to get a full berry color from the flower end right up to the stem. Stella Bella and Sparkle are prime examples, but they took an awful long time to perfect. The development period from inception to planting to producing its scale being 15 years or so in the case of the former. Marco's mother suggested those catchy names. We've tried competitions, people can submit names, but we have tend to find that my mom had come up with some really great names and, uh, you know, that's, that's innovative enough, that's distinct enough. And my mom, she's, she's a great critic at Table Grave. She's not afraid to say, hey, when there's something not great, she'll point it out. When there's something really good, she'll point it out. So, straight talk. And, and I think that's a lot of what, what our company is, is about straight talk. And, you know, if something's going good, we'll tell it, talk about it. And uh, if something needs improving, we're going to get behind it and give it our all. Creating and investing in new varieties is just one of the many risks inherent in table grape farming. There are others even harder to mitigate because of factors more difficult to manage, not least the weather and the water in this ever more drought prone landscape. Number one challenge that uh, I think we all as agriculturalists understand that our big challenge is weather and really dealing with climactic issues that are really beyond our control. Um, Others are when we're in a drought situation dealing with water availability. We have the great privilege in this area where we have surface water that's available to us to irrigate the crops. And we also, when there's no surface water available, we can extract water from the underground aquifer. And that's, that's a huge advantage when you have two sources of water, particularly when we go through dry spells and when there are really wet periods. But conditions aren't becoming any more hospitable to grape growers. And for Marco and family, the word sustainability has come to encompass the whole concept of a workable future. I'd say first and foremost, sustainability is being here tomorrow as a business and as a family. So you've got to figure out how to balance family time with work time. Sustainability is water management. Sustainability is really air quality management. Sustainability is packaging management. Sustainability is going to be uh, environmental resources. So what we're doing, whether it's solar projects, what we're doing to manage dust in the rows. So by, by trying to keep a cover crop and keeping things down, we're trying to manage our dust issues. Um, organic farming, I would clearly say is a sustainable strategy for the, particularly the consumer base that's really interested in, in lower uh, pesticide utilization and truly going back to basic farming. Canopy management and trying to use the sunlight to the best of our capacity to use natural resources to help grow a vine. And what you see in our vineyards, where this is a California gable and it's very much upright. It's over the last 25 years we've really gotten off of a simple low trellis structure up into the, up into the air. And so sustainability for people means that they're able to actually work right here standing up, not getting on their knees. That's been a big improvement for us as an industry and I think for employee safety. Lots of, lots of uh, improvement in packaging materials and in the, in the future I think you're going to see packaging process. A lot of automation coming to, uh, to, the, to the industry around the world. Marco maintains a sunny disposition though and radiates the evident pride of a man fully committed to his livelihood and legacy. He surveys the tall and sinuous threads of healthy grapevines all around him in his homestead. The challenges never stop and I think we're just thrilled to have the, have the opportunity to come to work every day. And yeah, this is really I, where I spend my time. Trying, trying to plan, trying to think, trying to uh, you know, figure out what to, where we're going to be in 5 or 10 or 15 years.